Dzień dobry, Krakow. So today is a real-time talk about real-time engagement, and more particularly about the seamless integration of live activities with Expo. So here's a quick rundown on, of what we're going to do today. So first, we're going to look at why use real-time engagement. Then, what is it about? We're going to go through an implementation overview with, for an example, live activities. And then we're going to see that the possibilities, we're going to see the possibilities that this opens up. So we all know about the famous tight feedback loop. It's something we all strive for as developers, and we enjoy it when it's present in our tools. And it's something we want to see everywhere. There's something that we don't always know is that it's something that our users love as well. And oftentimes, we don't present them with a lot of opportunities to enjoy this tight feedback loop. So I'm going to present to you that actually, we're using this real-time engagement through every company at every level. So for example, support has the live chat that's available. And our users can interact with real humans most of the time. These days, we're not too sure about um, the, the questions they have about a product. And if they require help, they can have real-time engagement um, available to them. Marketing uses real-time engagement as well through notifications. So for example, I don't know if you've ever opened the Uber Eats app without ordering. Well, after 30 minutes, accept a coupon code and a prompt to prompt you to buy some stuff on the app. And the last but not least is in engineering. We need to strive and develop these real-time engagement through data updates. Most of the time, we try to do them with notifications and other various tools that are present in apps. But a real great way of doing it that's fairly new is through live activities. So according to Apple, a live activities displays up-to-date information from your app, allowing people to view the progress of an activity, event, or task at a glance. And this is according to Apple. So if you don't respect this definition to the letter, we all know what's going to happen at review time. All right, so that's a little uh, preview of how it's presented. So it runs on the lock screen as well as on Dynamic Island on the new iPhones. On the older iPhones, so uh, 14 and under, uh, it's actually displayed as a banner, as a uh, permanent notification banner. So here's some examples of live activities in the wild. So we have Starbucks, so you can uh, check out your order progress and how it's going from the start to the pickup. And the same uh, thing is present with Uber as well, where you can see where you are in your ride, the different checkpoints. And uh, what we all need is the license plate to find the car. So it's present directly glanceable on your lock screen, so you don't have to worry about it. And it'll still work if your Wi-Fi is unstable, which is absolutely very nice um, being in like a new city when you get out of an airport. All right. So what we're going to build today is actually this live activity. So we're going to have a talk. And uh, we're going to be able to start the talk and end the talk. And we'll have a little app.js conf icon as well as a progress bar. So this is just a screenshot. I'm going to have a demo uh, at the end of the talk. All right. So let's start with how do we implement these live activities. So we first have. We first have the main app bundle, which we are all familiar with. We write it most likely in JavaScript or TypeScript, and we just set up with Expo. And that's what you get when you start a new project. And then everything else is new. And the first thing that we're going to build is the live activity presentation, which is the orange uh, square there. And it's built with Swift, and only Swift. It's something that we're going to build in Xcode, uh, so it's fairly new. And uh, we're going to be able to, like, build the whole presentation using preview and everything else we need and that's available in Xcode in order to render this view, uh, which is the banner or and the dynamic island elements. We're also going to have the live activity control module, which is an Expo module. Uh, we saw some presentations about how to do them. Um, but, and we're going to build it with uh, part of Swift and TypeScript. So it's going to be the, the little glue that we need. But I call it seamless because it's very easy to implement, and you're guided through most of these steps. 
Now the funny part is that we're actually never gonna, gonna communicate directly from our control module through, I, uh, through uh, the live activity presentation. It's gonna go through iOS with a little magic and something that's hardly documented for uh, Expo and was pretty hard to discover. So it's like the little fun implementation detail. All right, let's, get, get, let's go ahead and create the UI that sits in targets slash live activity in a standard uh, Expo repo. Obviously, as always, Evan Bacon is behind everything. So uh, he built a library called Expo Apple Targets. If you can do it without using this library, but it's extremely uh, time consuming, and you'll have to like, figure out config plugins. And as uh, normal TypeScript developers, I'm not interested in this. So I'm just going to copy paste some code. However, copy pasting does not work with this library because there's a mistake in the README. It's, there's, it's written. Um, team ID, but you need to change it to Apple team ID, whatever. It wasn't the issues, so I could find it there. This is just your standard app config. This is a TypeScript version, but it's in uh, JSON. It's pretty similar. So just at the end in the plugins, you're going to plug that plugin in. And you're going to put in your Apple team ID, which you can find on the, your Apple developer website. Next is our best friend, Expo. Uh, Xcode, pardon me. So. I'm gonna, everything else, that, everything that we're going to see uh, next is built in Xcode. It's VS Code screenshots because that's the best way to take the screenshots. But anyway, let's go ahead and start with the code. So I'm going to go over every screenshot. The, all the code and it's, is available in a blog post that I wrote. You can just look up Expo Live Activities on Google and you'll probably find it. Um, so let's start with our information that we want to pass through the live activity that we're going to pass all the way from our main app bundle to the view. And this is probably the most important struct that we're going to work with. So we have a start time, an end time, a title, an headline, and a widget URL. The widget URL is the deep link. So when you're going to click on the presentation, it's going to go down to your app in this window. Um, all right, so this is a bit of a big blob of code, but it's actually uh, the presentation that was on the lock screen. So it's the little banner that we wrote. So we can see we have a, a microphone icon and some the, the image at the bottom of the Apple at JS conf that's in the assets of our uh, X, of our Xcode Swift project. All right, then we have our widget. So it's everything that I just showed. So the talk activity view, which is the previous component that we just saw, is on the activity configuration, so the banner. And everything else is on the dynamic island. For simplicity, I only used some text and some the microphone emoji that we can see at some places with a system size of 16. So that's the only important uh, part of the Swift project. And it's built in, in Swift and Swift UI, so it's a little bit foreign to TypeScript developers. But it's pretty easy to understand and write, but it's much harder to read. And that's something that's the opposite with TypeScript. That's really enjoyable. All right. And then we simply export this to a widget. And um, we export it as main with a decorator. And it'll magically work um, as another project with our app, so as another target. And obviously, the last thing, we have to edit our, the info PLST. Because if we don't, we will simply not see the live activity display without any error message. Uh, it'll just not work. So it's something you have to do in Expo. It's pretty, uh, sorry, Xcode, pardon. It's pretty easy to do. And it's something very important and a step to not miss. All right. The ugly Swift stuff is done. Now let's do our Expo control module. So it's something that's pretty uh, standard. There's a command for it. So you start. You build your Expo modules with npx create Expo module latest. And there's the local flag, because we're actually adding it to an existing project instead of creating a new one in a single repo. That's the code it gives us. We're actually only going to keep uh, the parts that are in yellow, because this is um, only for iOS. You can build the same uh, functionality or pretty much the same functionality on Android using permanent notifications, but we're going to only do iOS. All right, same file that I showed in the beginning. 
it's all it's also present in this folder, so the module folder. Because this is what we're going to give to iOS, and iOS is going to recognize it and launch our, app, our live activity for us. That's the only way we can trigger our, this exact live activity. All right. So now that that's done, we have a simple file. So this is our index TypeScript. It's to control this live activity. So we have a function to start it, a function to end it. Right now, it's an argument array, which is not the best. You can wrap it and try to type it to get like an object input much better. But that's what we get right now. Uh, we, can, we can see up there that we're importing the live activity control module from Deeper. And that's what we're going to see. So same thing. However, the most important part is at the bottom, is if, if we're on iOS, we're going to require the native module. If we're not, we're going to fall back to dummy functions that are right there and that do nothing. Um, the return value of the start activity, and in the dummy function, it returns false. That's because it did not launch the live activity. Debugging, as we saw previously, is very hard. So returning some Boolean values is really, is really useful. In Swift, you can also log code, but it's very hard to see. All right, this is a lot of code, so we don't really care about it. I'll deep, I'll deep deeper into some of these functions. I just want to show you that that's all the code we need to control our live activity. All right, so let's dig deeper into the start activity function. So basically, what we do is we use a macro to see if the live activity is available on this iOS um, version. It's something that's very important, because if you don't do this, you're, you'll get a build error, a cryptic build error, and you won't be able to continue. So uh, if, if, your main, if your Apple target is lower than 16.2, which is always uh, nice to have. All right, so we're also going to use our attributes so the attributes we just defined earlier. And we're going to launch our live activity by passing these attributes. We're also logging. But as I said, this, these logs are very hard to see. Same thing to end the live activity. So we're going to use our, our macro right there, still pass the activity attributes. And we're actually pa writing these attributes in real time right there because um, you can keep the live activity displayed, so we need to pass it values before we end it. And we can see right there we have our dismissal policy that's uh, set at immediate because, like I just said, you can keep it displayed until Apple decides that it's time to go. All right, it's time for the quick demo of what we just wrote. So we can just swipe our phone, we're already in the app. We're going to start the talk. And then we're going to go on a lock screen. We can see that it's displayed right there. We can't see the progress bar because of privacy. And now we can see it. So it's very nice. And then we can uh, go on, close the app, and we'll see it on the dynamic island. We'll see the mic that is displayed right there. We can long press on it to see more details. And we can click on it, and it'll bring, it'll bring right back to the app. Then we can close it again. We close the live activity, and it's over. Thank you. All right, that's cool. What else can we do? Well, you probably guessed it at this point, everything. And what I mean by everything is literally everything. Uh, combine Expo with the uh, extensions, all the possibilities are there. We can do widgets, watch apps, Safari extensions. And something that's very cool that we can do are Siri, Intense, and UI. With the new version of Siri coming up, you will be able to add some UI, your custom UI, to the Siri interface and add some actions by, with Siri talking. When you talk to Siri, it will be able to do actions in your app. And this is extremely good for accessibility, because people will be able to do actions in your app without dealing with your interface. And you can do everything else. Every native code that you have, you can bridge it to Expo very easily. And you'll be able to have tremendous UI experiences. And you'll be able to provide so much experience and speed to your users. And it's something that Expo offers that other competitors don't. All right, that's it for my presentation. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed.